Good evening, everybody. Hope you're having a good summer evening. Unfortunately, you're stuck with me tonight. Uh, Brad Powell apparently is having back problems. And my buddy Benny, who's here with me, is actually upstairs sitting in the chair with his back problems. So I know back problems are the type of thing, you, at least I used to think, ah, I got it up, get through this. But as soon as you have back problems, you know uh, you have too much back to <laughs> Yeah, as soon as you have back problems, you realize what everybody's going through. Okay, so we're going to kind of do, uh, what do I want to call it, a targeted analysis. First, we'll go through our regular, what's happening and some of the good trades that we're in. That's right. Let me do the heavy lifting. Um, that'd be the blind leading the blind. So. We can see that the positive trading today in the Dow was still kind of indicating that if this J-hook pattern is in progress, this should be our next target. At the same time, we saw the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ opened up down here at the T-line again, gap down which wouldn't be a very positive thing other than we're still above the T-line. And the Dow was up. The transportation index was up. And the S&P was down a bit, but not uh, – this is the, uh, the SPY um, – down a bit, but use the three T-line. So when you add all that – up together, the question you ask yourself is, has there been a major change of investor sentiment? And obviously the answer is no. That's just kind of mixed. <laughs> Excuse me. We can see that the uh, crude oil <coughs> prices are coming back up, but I didn't see too much activity yet in uh, some of the oil stocks, like whiting. I would have thought would have had a little bit more upside. Bass might be bottoming. Let's take a look at gold. Gold is still having a hard time getting back up above the T-line. The one that was, has made good money is we shorted uh, shorted uh, August lean hogs. And this is where the analysis becomes much easier seeing what the candlestick signals are doing based upon if we can kind of consider this kind of a, a trend support, if we can consider this level a trend support, if we can analyze the fact that look at all the doji type days that failed here, and then they brought it back down. So even on this basis, if it came back down through the low, what would that tell you about an uptrend? The uptrend wasn't there. They're taking it down. When they broke through this level, what that tell you about the support levels? There's no more support. We've got a good, logical, short, uh, short uh, position going on. So, again, we're just kind of, if you're trading futures, you just kind of use the what I would say, common sense analysis of what's happening in the trend. Cattle, hard to trade right now because it's pretty choppy. It's on the slow uptrend, but that slow uptrend would give you lots of pullbacks, taking up lots of pullbacks. Um, with no support, would Fibonacci numbers help? Uh, only if you see like an extended trend. So if I was buying here, because of the buy signal, after 
an obvious downtrend, yeah, that's where you throw Fibonacci numbers on. Not because you're using Fibonacci numbers, but you want to see what everybody else is watching. So as you can see, when it came down, we had a candlestick reversal signal. And where did it fail? Right here at the 50% retracement before backing off. So when it came up here, backed off, a little bit suspicious. Came up pretty close the second time, came up the third time. If you had your Fibonacci number on here, or retracement, you say, yeah, that's what they're, they're well, that's where they're selling. Now, again, the advantage of candlestick is it tells you exactly what's happening. Is this the way you set up your charts? Yes, you're looking at my charts. Um, so the charts we're looking at right now, this is uh, CQG. Now, I don't recommend this to people because the, this was the grandfather of all charts, and a lot of the charting services use their feed off of this CQG, and it's about $1,400 a month. So there's other, I mean, all the other charts, like on Metastock, um, and I'm not even sure. I think TCNet may even... Uh, Use the speed Ninja Trader. So, anyways, the ones that we've been looking at, what we're going to, what I'm going to try to slide into tonight is using the patterns uh, that are the most uh, effective. The moving averages are is the red line is the 200-day simple moving average. The blue line is the 50-day simple moving average. Again, because that's what every money manager around the world uses to make their decisions about their portfolios. We don't use those as decision makers. We use those to see what everybody else is doing at those levels. And we know exactly what, uh, uh, we know exactly what's happening based upon candlestick signals at those levels that everybody's making their decision. The gray line is the 34 EMA that works relatively effectively for showing support and resistance. But the most important one on this chart is the T line, the eight exponential moving average. And it becomes a very simple process. If you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T line, you can stay long until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line. Or if you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line, you can stay short until you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line. With the caveat that the further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probabilities it's going to come back and test it. So what we want to eventually get into tonight is which signals and patterns you want to use to make uh, your most effective uh, use of candlestick knowledge. The kicker signal. We recommended HCLP the other day because of the kicker signal. And the results of a kicker signal is usually going to be a fairly extensive uh, uptrend. These are some of the positions that we have on right now. Um, TTCT, because of the gap up. It's consolidated, but you can see what they're doing here at the T-line, holding the T-line. So what's our worst case scenario? That they're in this trend channel. Oops, I can even do trend channel. So whenever you can see this type of thing where you can draw parallel lines, it's a pretty good indication that uh, that everybody else can see that where the tops and bottoms of these uh, this channel is. MNK, very simple process. Once the pattern has started or the trend has started, just a very simple method for maintaining your position. Notice kind of our J-hook pattern breakout through the uh, 200. 
If this is wave one, wave three should be up here someplace. What's our confirmation to stay in that long? As long as it stays above the T-line, you can stay long. Takes a lot of the emotional uh, uh, decision making out of the uh, out of your trading. Here's kind of a breakout on our v, uh, VICR. We started buying, buying VICR down in this area. Why was that? Because very simply, you could see the buy signals. You could see that they broke out through the T-line and this downtrending chant or this downtrend. So we have wave one, wave two, wave three, and they did a kicker type signal the other day, gapped it up. So what do you do here? You stay long until you see a sell signal. This is not difficult. Remember, the Japanese rice traders have produced the graphics to show us what's happening in investor sentiment. Fry pan bottom, nice breakout move. There's your J-hook. You stay long until you see a sell signal. Now, look what we had going right here. Another fry pan bottom. So what do we want to see coming out of this fry pan bottom? A breakout. If we see a bearish engulfing signal, what's that tell us about the breakout? The sellers took control here. You want to be out of this trade. Notice you had a bearish engulfing close below the T-line. If you hung with it, it needed to close back up above the T-line, which it tried to do. Let me make this bigger. Which it tried to do. When it opened positive today, yeah, you had the prospects that they were taking it back up. But when they closed it back below the T-line, what did you have? You have a bearish engulfing signal, sell signal and a close below the T-line. That kind of told you you lost your trajectory, the lost the uh, bullish movement. You should be out of the trade. MAV, ever since our little cradle pattern here, looked like it was flattening out, but now we're starting the uptrend. Where's your first target? You can see there's a gap to fill right here. If it probably comes up there, it's giving you a pattern that they'll eventually probably Come up and test the uh, test the highs. VLRS, the J hook pattern. We started buying here. What did we have setting up right here? Well, we had our best friend signal gap up from a doji back up through the T line. What did this tell us when it closed above this level? So we were probably in the uh, uh, started buying on this day right here. I think that was the day we recommended it. Because what did you have going besides a best friend signal? You had a J-hook pattern. And if the logic is if wave one and wave three are the same, it's probably taking you up to the 200-day moving average. J-hook patterns always go up. Not always, but the probability is the reason we're identifying a J-hook pattern is because they do go up most of the time. That's the whole point of identifying the patterns is the reason we know they're good patterns is because we know what the expected results should be. If they weren't good expected results, we wouldn't be looking at them as pattern setups. Uh, what did I just do? VSOR. VSI. Look what happened down here. Well, I guess you can keep that there. Bullish engulfing, bullish doji sandwich up through this level, up through the T-line. If it breaks out through here, I say if, if this is kind of our breakout level, and it's actually right about there, which is where it closed today, so you've got the benefit of knowing what the uh, doji sim or the doji uh, rule is, which basically tells you, they're going to move it in the direction how they open after a doji. So if they open this lower and start taking it down, what's it doing? It's confirming our doji as a sell signal, stochastics in the overbought area, and it's telling us this was a resistance level. They aren't going up through. On the other hand, our doji rule says if it opens positive, they're probably trading positive, 
And if that's the case, it tells you they're breaking out. Now we're wave one, wave two, wave three. So knowing just these little simple rules of each pattern and signal allows you to make much more uh, decisive decisive decisions, I guess that's the right word, um, at, at levels where using the candlestick signals, you've got much higher probabilities. Aqua, there's our little scoop pattern. How long do we hold the scoop pattern? You hold the slingshot effect until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T-line. GIII, you can see the little J-hook pattern. There's a doji today. What's this? Okay. Uh, right. Gives you the, uh, the same scenario. Doji today, if it opens lower, you probably want to be out of it. If it opens higher, you've got a J-hook pattern in progress. TJ Maxx came out of this little breakout level. You just stay long until you see a sell signal and a close below the T-line. Duluth, oh, well, we did Duluth, close below the T-line after a sell signal. And INNT, we start buying. It doesn't have a buy signal here, but the buying tells us that the probabilities of it coming back up to test the T-line is probably pretty high. And once it gets there, you just watch to see what it does. But buying down here, going to the T-line, $1.50 on a $7 price, that's still a good hefty uh, percentage move. And if you set up, see something like this setting up, an option trade is much more relevant. On the sell side, the short side, Things like Zag, you can see the slow rollover. You can see the the uh, Doji's the bearish uh, the bearish confirmation, and notice the little kind of support level here that it was breached. Now we have a Doji. We're not in the oversold area, so what happens if this opens lower tomorrow? We pretty much have a Doji sandwich prospect making the downside the same magnitude, which tells us they aren't supporting at the 200, so the probabilities are pretty strong. It's going to head down further, and if it does, the next target is the next support level. We recommended shorting DVAX today, but it didn't really confirm. If you did short it, Doji, if it opens lower, what's that tell us? We still probably got the prospect of a doji sandwich. Why is this downtrend significant? You can see kind of where the support level was, and it broke through that support level, probably giving us the, uh, the prospects of a wave one, wave two, going into wave three to the downside. And we recommended, oh, pshaw, get rid of those. Shorting RGNX, Doji, Doji, close below the T-line. They tried to bring it back up. Close, bearish engulfing, closing below the T-line. Where's your next likely target? Right here. Is That that could be one target. I was looking for all the targets. See if I can find where this started. Same scenario. You put your... Fibonacci retracement numbers on here to see if it doesn't support here, might support here, might support here, might support here. Now, we're not projecting that it's going to support at any one of those places. All we're looking for is if it hits one of these levels and does a candlestick reversal signal, that's a pretty good indication that was where the, the, the correct support level. Okay, real quick, the biggies. NVIDIA started coming back up again. Becomes uh, the next viable uptrend. Apple is at all-time highs. It closed just below the all-time high today, which was yesterday.
but you still have this fry pan bottom. Now you see whether they break it out or if they fail at this level. Amazon, as you know, reported earnings that seem to be relatively strong. I don't know where it's trading. I knew it was trading up here at one time, then it was trading right in here. So um, this one is having a hard time picking a direction. Anybody see where it's trading right now? It may not still be a very convincing. Uh, they uh, had very good earnings, but I think they their revenues. Okay, so they're right back up in in this range. All right, so they're still trading up. Uh, all right, so they're still up. Uh, what's that? About forty, sixty, or fifty-five points or so. Netflix, this was an example the other day of where they gapped it way down and brought it back up. It could have been a piercing signal, but they didn't get it back up to the range. So the next day, you needed to see what it was doing. And as you can see, they're still selling it off. Um, I wouldn't be, if I was anything, I'd be short, but I uh, wouldn't be going long just yet. Tesla, nothing yet. Still stuck, stuck below the T line. Uh, let's see. Got some calls on Roku, trying to get back up above the T line. You can see the trend channel in effect. Labu, telling you the uh, biotech. Are still having trouble getting going. It's hovering right here on the 50-day moving average. A doji spinning top. The Cassics not yet to the oversold area. Got to see whether the 50-day moving average is going to hold or not. And Nugget still trading lower. Gold is still drifting lower. So a lot of people, when we go through the different trainings of the different signals and patterns, the biggest complaint is there's you come up with so many good charts on any given day. How do you pick the best one, and how do you learn how to use them correctly? Well, the thing that we've been advocating here recently is if you're learning all the signals or at least know what the signals and patterns look like, just pick out a few where you – Learn them well, because you're always going to have more trades than you can handle based upon the simple uh, scanning techniques, the candlestick. A big belt hold signal. What do we want to see the next day? Bullish confirmation. So did this belt hold signal work? Not yet. But if after a few days it comes back up through this level, yes, now it's telling us it's taking effect. So what do we want to see after a belt hold signal? We want to see them continuing to trade positive. And what's a belt hold signal in fur? They've taken out a lot of the sellers. Buyer sellers, buyer sellers, buyer sellers. Sellers just slamming it, and the bulls are sopping up all that selling. So now there's not as many sellers that start the next uptrend. So what do we want to see on a big Bullish engulfing belt hold type signal. Bullish confirmation. Is this one out of the woods yet? Answer is, eh, you had a bullish signal, but where would I be a buyer? It came back up through this area, telling me the initial profit taking is over. Boston Scientific, belt hold. Started trading a little bit positive today. This tells me. If they, you see some more strength in this one, you want to be a buyer because it pretty much tells you they're continuing this uptrend. The belt hold. So the other patterns, the one that has produced the biggest profits here recently is not that one. I'll type it wrong. The 
the eye. This is what we're looking for. The fry pan bottom, eventually creating a big move. Now, do we always get a big move in one day? Definitely not. What you're looking for is that strong price move coming out of a out of a uh, a fry pan. So today you can see what happened out, coming out of this little fry pan pot bottom, ADMA. And this is where you can use all the uh, simple rules of candlesticks. Look where you are, just above the 50, right about the same level that the uh, fry pan started. And then it gapped it up on the open. What's that by itself tell us? So that tells us that we've got a best friend going. So now we've got a fry pan bottom that's above the, at the breakout level, above the 50, gapping up. Is that something to be afraid of, of going after? No, that tells you this pattern is confirming. And when, do, when, does, when is it the right time to buy a signal? When the stochastics are in the oversold area. When is it probably the right time to buy a, a breakout? Usually when the stochastics are up toward the overbought area. So just knowing the simple results, this is what I want. When they come out of this kind of the fry pan bottom, it's telling you something. There's a new dynamic in the uh, price move. Another fry pan bottom, an NPC. It opens positive, gaps up. Right where this pattern started, through the 50. Oh. NSC, a belt hold? Yes. And what's that imply? That this uptrend is probably still going to continue because they took out a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of sellers. The minimum volume I use in my scans is uh, I use stocks that are trading greater than five because I want to be able to margin uh, my picks because every time I put on a candlestick pick, it's because I know the probabilities are going to be in my favor. So I want to get as much leverage as possible, which margin is part of that. And I usually try to have stocks that are trading at least 200,000 shares or greater on any given day. Um, and then there's a scan to do it where you can – find which stocks have an average of 200,000 shares per day over the last 90 days. Because if I'm making a decision to get in and out of a position, first of all, I don't want to be at the mercy of the market maker. And secondly, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to buy or try to sell a stock uh, and wait around 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes to see if I can get it filled. I want to get out and move on to something else. You buy when stochastics are high? Yes. If I'm coming out of a pattern, they're usually going to be in the overbought uh, condition. Uh, if you're trading options, I'd rather see a stock that's trading a million shares a day. Um, yeah, and it depends on the size of your uh, position. Uh, if you have a, a half a million dollar account and each position is $50,000, yeah, you might be looking more for stocks that are trading three, four, five hundred thousand shares a day or greater. If you've got a seventy thousand dollar account and you've got ten seven thousand dollar positions, yeah, a two hundred thousand dollar position or two hundred thousand shares a day isn't gonna you're not gonna affect the volume on that that stock. So the benefit of a smaller account is having the uh Having the advantage of buying smaller uh, capitalization stocks, um, so anyways, uh, so that's my minimum. Five stocks, greater than five dollars a share, trading more than two hundred thousand shares a day. And if you stick with is this, the right one. No, it wasn't. It's kind of your little fry pan bottom, J-hook, bullish engulfing, left-right combo, J-hook pattern. So 
So this one would be a, an easy one to buy on positive trading tomorrow because you're above the little breakout level. You did a left-right combo. Your stack stochastic is coming up. You can see that it's supported back here on the 34. You're ready to move up another uh, right two points up to the $13 area. Barnes Group, where did this break out? Right about the same level that the started the pattern, and right here at the 200-day uh, moving average, pretty much told you that's where the enthusiasm is coming back in. So in this case, I'm buying positive trading. I'm already in the overbought area. If I was buying down here, uh, if I'm buying down here, I'm looking for stochastics to be in the oversold area. Look what broke out here at this fry pan bottom, HCIE. This is what we're looking for, is a new dynamic in the uh, price move. So the strongest of the year single signals as we did it in our quantitative or our top rank patterns is these these best friend type signals. We have a doji gap up. That tells us there's probably going to be a lot more upside. AMD, a gap up through the resistance level. Tells us there's probably going to be more upside in the next wave. So this is all kind of correlated back to buying things that you can recognize and become a master of. That's not the right English. Become a master of which. Oh, I just that all up. Let's see. Well, we just did that. Another gap up. XLNX. Another best friend gap up through this level telling us we're probably going to be in a 45 degree. Um, of which you can become the master. Okay, there you go. Thank you. Uh, Tells us on this little bullish engulfing gap up, there's probably going to be a lot more upside. ECEI. Gap up. So what do we look for after a spinning top doji? If it opens positive, it tells us we're still in a strong uptrend, which tells us, again, that's exactly what we would expect after a, a best friend signal. Uh, AD, no. There, there's no way to project when a gap up is going to occur. What we have as benefits with candlestick signals is the fact that we can figure out what to do when we see a gap up. Gibraltar Industries, ROCK, kicker type signal. What's the expectation here? Probably is going to head back up into the trajectory. What's your strongest signal uh, as far as individual candlestick signal? The kicker signal tells you there's been a dramatic change of investor sentiment. Uh, Raymond, gaps always, or not always, but the rule of thumb is uh, uh, that they eventually get filled. They may not get filled this week, this month, this year. And we're not interested in in that. We're more interested in what's happening on this gap up, what's the trade for this one. Now, it may get up here and in two months turn around and come all the way back down. We're only interested in what happens after a kicker signal. What about RSI signal? 
John, you can use whatever index you want to. Now, you can see how simple these charts are. The reason for that is no matter what you can add, the number one criteria is that you know that the signals work or we wouldn't be looking at them 200 years, 400 years later. Then you can start adding what other, indi other indicators you might want to add. I use stochastics, 1233. You want to put on RSI, see how that correlates with your price trends. Ah. Well, Shazam. Got the moving averages on here. As you can see, this chart's not very uh, cluttered because our number one criteria is the signal itself. Then everything else is a confirming indicator. You can stick MACD. I can't, for some reason, I can't do it on these charts where I have MACD overlaid. But you got to remember, MACD is a little bit slightly uh, a lagging indicator. So on my other charts, uh, you can see that, oops, on here, you can see I have MACD and stochastics on, on the same chart. For some reason, I can't seem to do that over here on PQG. So I don't use MACD as a primary indicator. But if I can put it on, I put it on because it adds a little bit of added fluff to being in the right trade at the right time. You can always look for left-right combos, a doji followed by a bullish engulfing signal, which is usually going to indicate a very strong price move. You can see the left-right combo right here on CVRR. Off the 50, through the T-line, bullish left-right combo, right back up here to where the indecision started, telling me that more than likely you're at wave one, wave two, wave three. Notice how wave three is starting, bouncing off the 50-day moving average. Anything that we can do to add probabilities that that's where people are buying uh, just improves our probabilities of being in the right place at the right time. Left-right combo on Xerox, we know more than likely our first target is at least to the 50-day moving average. Uh, uh, John, yes, we use the Fibonacci's as I illustrated before, that uh, if I see a trend, if I find another one, and I think it's reversing, at least I can throw the Fibonacci's on there, not to use them as targets, but to use them to see what everybody else is thinking the target is going to be. So on something like CAP, CAAP, good thing I spelled that correctly, you can see the T-line crunch pushing right up through the, uh, the 50. Tells us we're still probably more upside. Valero. So here's a case where if I thought things are coming back up, I don't know which target to use. I'm going to use whatever I think everybody else is watching. So there's our Fibonacci retracement. Went through the 34, went through that level, went through the 50, went through that level. Now I'll just watch to see what they do at that level. If it goes through there, you know, we've probably got now a wave one, wave two, wave three in, in progress. Ah. Now, okay. Now I'm goofing things up. I can't even get off of here. Ah. This is just. So we can see what happened here on this fry pan bottom. As soon as it broke out, we started getting more action. That's on HLX. Um, what about all-time highs? Do you use Fibonacci extension? No. Uh, use something more simple. I stay long until I see a candlestick uh, reversal signal. Does your scanner identify belt hold signals? Uh, yeah, Paul, and that's probably something 
I don't have to use them because I can usually identify them. But uh, that's the type of question you want to ask in the chat room during the day because there's people in there that have all the formulas and they can tell you what it is or where to, where to get them. Here's our message. Gap up, profit taking. What do we want to see after the big gap up? Why do we call it the message? Because even though they sold it off after they opened it up, up there, the message was they were getting into this with great enthusiasm. What we're looking for is when that profit taking is over and start buying at that point. Or you look for positions where you have a bullish engulfing, a buy signal right smack dab on the uh, support level, like the 50. It at least gets you in a position at the right place at the right time. ESV, you can observe the obvious. Yes. If this is kind of your, uh, kind of a trend channel, this is kind of a trend channel, and you see that they've supported on the 50 this time. Where's your next target? At least probably back up to the, uh, the top of the trend channel. Looks, seems like back of three candles is most predictive. We look back of three. Uh, John, you're going to have to retype that. What does it signal when it gap up and the rest of the day it closes halfway down the body of the previous day or lower? If you buy something, <coughs> let's see if I can find one. What's, uh, what's the whole purpose of, of candlestick signals? It's identifying a bullish signal. Let's see if I can find something. Eh. Nothing yet. But if you're buying something based upon a bullish signal and it opens positive the next day and then closes more than halfway down the candle that told you the bulls were in control, who's in control? The bears are still in control. You close it right back out. It didn't, it didn't work. And if you always keep in mind, like we did, uh, on our emotions training last weekend, if you realize that probably at least one third of your trades is not going to work, no matter how good your trading program is, if you don't know what to do with uh, with trades that don't work, you're going to not make any money. So candlestick analysis is just as effective for telling you which trades are working and which trades to get right back out of and move on to something else. You ever use the 50 or 240 time frames bars? Not that I know of. But again, I use the uh, 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 I use the again, simple process of using the candlestick signals telling me which uh, what my uh, what my reversals are. Anything else you add is just whether you can use it to uh, confirm uh, yeah, confirm whether it's improving the probabilities of your trade. Three candles is enough to predict. Yeah, usually it's, at most you're going to see a three candle reversal signal, but sometimes your patterns are obviously going to be much longer. Uh, the only time I use mental stops is obviously when I'm sitting here. But if I was buying this one today after the big inverted hammer, after the kicker type gap up, I know that if it closed back down here or if it traded back down through the halfway point of that candle, I want to be out of it. But usually I'm because I'm sitting here all day long, I'm watching. So if I bought this during the early part of the day and it was acting right, yeah, you know, I find a place that tells me I shouldn't be in this anymore and, and put a stop there. Uh, 
Well, yeah, sometimes when you see a gap up, I'll find another one, uh, AK. What did I just do? Cool. So cool was an example of a gap up, a big move to the upside. So what did this tell us when they brought it right back down? Lots of profit taking. If they open up positive the next day, what's that tell you? The profit taking is over. These charts are all daily charts, uh, John. But it doesn't matter what you're trading. If I'm trading, whoops, let's say I'm trading lean hogs on a daily chart. My first analysis is, oh, I want to be short. But I'm in the oversold area. Does that mean I want to be ready to cover my short position? Sure do. So if that's the case, I flip to my 10-minute chart. Uh, trying to see where the so if they started taking it up and I covered it if they came back down below the open again on my 10 minute chart yeah that tells me they aren't buying yet so the 10 minute chart the one minute chart the monthly chart the weekly chart all look exactly the same as a daily chart if you go back to the simple uh, analysis or definition the candlestick signals are the accumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame? Doesn't matter what the time frame is. The charts will look exactly the same on your one minute chart as they will on your monthly chart. So here's a scoop type pattern. So you might have a slingshot effect to the upside. Where's your first possible target? Right about in here is a gap to fill. So that would be at least a target to look for. CVI, you can see the fry pan bottom breakout. Probably got more upside. And Under Armour, kind of breaking out through this level with a piercing signal, big uh, spinning top type signal. But look where you closed above the T line, the 34 and the uh, 50, if it starts trading positive, telling us they're probably breaking this downward trend channel. Okay, markets are still, this is a case of, a lot of people say, don't you want to sell in May and go away? No, let the charts tell you what to do. Um, so this is going to tell you exactly what's going on in investor sentiment. Okay, so that's about all I got tonight. Are there any general questions on candlesticks? Uh, you can use whatever you want to as far as anticipating where your next target might be, John. Because we're not projecting what it is. We're just projecting what everybody else might be watching to be the next target. So if I'm buying, based upon a positive open after a best friend gap up doji, where's my first logical target? Up here. When it gets there, what do I do? Well, I see what type of signal we have at that point. And then make, if it, if it came up here and did a little uh, shooting star right at this level and then opened lower the next day, that would pretty much tell me that, that uh, level is where everybody's watching to take profit. Uh, the, uh, let's see. The Dow Jones had a shooting star today in oversold area. Are you sure? That's, what's, uh, Lisa, what's the definition of a shooting star? If we own a stock that gaps up, we still put a stop right at the open, and it comes back through the open, then we can repurchase, correct? Yeah, sometimes when you gap up, the wick is not long enough. What's the definition of a shooting star? The tail is two times greater than the body. All this is is an update that uh, had more to the upside.
doesn't matter what the shooting star is. The body can be a red or a green. It's the tail to the upside. You pointed out two dozen viable charts. What criteria do I use to select among them? Uh, Gail, that's why we do uh, do the what we call the top ranked or the quantifier. And that's why I also tell people you don't need to learn all of those those signals or patterns. If you just uh, learn what to do on three or four patterns. So on something like this, where you saw what we call the message, where they gapped it up and brought it back down, what are we looking for after they've gapped it up? The profit taking over and start heading up. If you know the rules on each signal or pattern, you have a much more command of your own uh, uh, trading based upon we know what should happen after each signal, and you know what should not happen after each signal. That's right. Buy them all. Um, You consider volume in your buy decision. If stock spikes up on low or below average volume, remember, we're not buying volume. We're buying price. Every, a lot of people say, well, I want to be buying a stock that where when it's going up, the volume's going up. Volume and price have absolutely nothing to do with each other. If people are buying a stock that nobody's willing to sell, it's going to go up on low volume. Now, on a day like this, if you see a big volume spike, yeah, that adds is that added fluff that there's been a change of ownership, that usually it's the uh, weak have sold into the strong, or up at the top it's the uh, uh, exuberant selling into the, uh, uh, the smart money. Would you say, what would you say is the effect time, time of various signals? I know many bars after a buy signal would be nature of the buy signal linger. My thinking is, for example, might be that a doji is up until a doji is up until it confirms. A big kicker signal might be much longer. Is there any rules of thumb? Uh, Oops, I'm having a hard time figuring out what the question is. How many bars after a buy signal? Uh, you can't tell. Remember, you have some things that are the best friend, which implies there's been a dramatic change of investor sentiment. And the reason we call it your best friend is because more than likely, it not only is it going to have an uptrend, but it's going to have a strong uptrend. Same scenario on a kicker signal. We don't know how long this uptrend uh, will be in progress. Now, we could make an assessment that it might be up here. What we know what should happen after a kicker signal, the probabilities, bah humbug, is that it's probably going to be a good strong uptrend. The probabilities are that. Once a trend starts, now our analysis is you stay long until you see a sell signal and then you don't want it to confirm. Um, you consider volume and you think that would that be a reason not to buy? No. Remember, we're still buying price. I'm going back to Jim's question. Uh, what is the effective time? There's a lot of times, I say a lot of times, I can't think of one right now to give as an example. Eh, and it's not on this, not any on this chart. But sometimes you see a good strong buy signal. And then it goes flat for four, five days. Well, what is the assumption when you see a buy signal? The bulls are taking control. If it doesn't move after four or five days, what's your analysis? The bulls aren't there. Close it out and move on to something. Remember, the whole point of candlestick analysis is to analyze when the bulls or the bears are taking control. And if the price starts moving where you can't tell who's in control, Move on to something. There's always going to be more trades than you'll ever be able to handle 
at the end of each day. So the next day, you're always going to have more trades than, than you'll be able to uh, participate in. So at that point, it becomes a function of cultivating to see which ones are the best ones for the next day. Uh, thank you, Gary. Um, okay. Uh, we'll do one rec or one request from each person. Uh, Jim, go ahead and do the double line. And in 4.2 seconds, do the next double line. You are short TV. Whoops. Uh, yes. Your stochastics are still going down. You still haven't been able to close above the T-line, but you've got three dojis in a row. So what's that telling you? There's not a lot of excessive selling pressure here. So if they start trading positive, what's that tell you about the lack of selling pressure? There isn't any. Close out the position. Now if it opens positive and trades positive, what pattern do you have setting up? Well, obviously a J-hook pattern. So if you know the simple rule of the doji, if they open up positive and start trading positive after a doji, that's the direction they're going to go. You close out the position. Southwest Airlines had a big spike up today, and it did it as a morning star signal. Remember the simple analysis? Oh, I can't get rid of this thing. This is, makes you want to kick your grandmother. Uh, anyways, it's broken out through this level. Morning star signal off the 50, closed right here at the 200. Makes this very simple. If it opens lower and you're long, you close it out. If it opens lower and starts trading lower, because the probabilities are it's going to consolidate for a few days. If it opens positive, you stay long, and then you put your stop right where it closed. Because logic says if it opens positive and starts trading back down, the profit taking is in progress. AMD, we did kind of a gap up. I would suspect it's heading back up for this uh, trend trajectory. American, uh, you can buy this. It's not a very great looking chart. It's got a lot of resistance here at the 50. It has to get through that level. Uh, I wouldn't be uh, in that one. Microsoft, you can see the little scoop type J hook, but you did a bearish Harami today, which which uh, tells you if they open it lower, they're probably coming back to test the T-line. But right now, on a longer-term basis, you just stay with Microsoft until it uh, closes below the T-line. AVO, you stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. Land's End, you can start buying this one on positive trading tomorrow. And now, big bullish left-right combo. You get ready to buy this on the breakout. HFC, look at the little bobble breakout. What happens on a bobble breakout, but it's basically a J-hook pattern, usually implies there's going to be more upside. Home Depot. Bearish engulfing, bearish doji sandwich. I would suspect it's coming back down to test uh, either the 34 or the 50. Manpower, stay long. Notice your kind of your belt hold, bullish engulfing, confirmation, you stay long. Now, what you have to be careful is if they break through a resistance level, sometimes they'll come back and test it. So if you see them trade this lower tomorrow, like back through today's open, take profits, watch what it does if it comes back down to the 50. If it supports, that means it's going up higher. Whoops. E-C-E-H-Y. 
Ah, that one's not coming up here. Sorry, TV. CE felonies stay long. Watch to see what it does at this this level. NIHD, good looking chart, bullish engulfing, J hook pattern. Stay long until you see a sell signal. Whiting has been backing off. Uh, if you want to go short, but I'd be afraid to go short with crude oil prices heading back up. So I probably wouldn't be long or short because you're just kind of in a junky congestion area at this point. No real direction. Head. You can buy this one, provided the volume is good. Now, on a 250 stock, I'd want to see at least a million shares traded so you can get in and out of it easy enough. Tandem, all you can do here is stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. AMLP, nice fry pan bottom. There's your message. So what are you looking for on the message? You're waiting to see when the selling stops. What's your bullish Harami doji tell you? The selling has stopped. That's when you can start buying. So essentially you have a fry pan bottom, J-hook pattern, breakout. This one should be going higher. SPWH, nothing. Just no direction on this one. I'd be someplace else. CSX, one of the, uh, that a railroad. Come on, come on, come on. There you go. Notice when they gapped it up, you're in a 45 degree. You stay long as long as it stays above the T line. Intel. Did they announce after hours and it was down quite a bit? Anyways, you can see how they kept failing at the 50. If this does open lower tomorrow, Telling you they're probably bringing it back down to the 200 day moving average. The diamonds, stay long. O'Reilly's, you stay long, but you did a long legged doji. I'd be ready to take profits if you start seeing some selling tomorrow. Again, because of the doji. OLED, you just stay long as long as you stay above the T line. Does this work just as well with options as stocks? Then there's time factor theta. John, when you're buying buying options, you're buying it based upon the underlying stock. So it has nothing to do with buying options. Options are just one method of buying the underlying stock. GTLS backed off today. It started up uh, trying to do a J-hook pattern, but now you have a hammer, inverted hammer. If it opens positive, you can start buying because what do we know about the inverted hammer? That if it opens positive after an inverted hammer, um, the probabilities are probably 95% or greater that it's going higher. The 34 is the EMA. Oh, let's take a gander here at soybeans, Raymond. You can see they've been bringing it up. But it looks like once they hit the 34, uh, they start backing it off a little bit. Right now, I would stay long as long as they don't trade uh, trade back below the T-line. I think AK Steel is right here just north of me about 20 minutes, or at least one of their plants is. Uh, right now, you can stay long as long as this stays above the T-line. And I was telling my buddy that in Butler, that's where they they uh, manufactured the Jeep, the Willys, the Bantam. Oh, oh and there was two others, and I can't remember what they were. Oh, uh, FV, I went to the 34 because I used the 34 in the past, and then I switched over to the 20 one time when the market was in a big steady up. So they were bringing it back to the 20 versus the 50, 
But then we had Doug Campbell on oh, a few months ago, and he showing how effective the 34 was, so I moved back to the 34. Kind of bullish Harami open at the prior day's close, or does it have to gap up? No. Remember, it's a signal. If it opens at one end and closes inside the other end, that's fine. What you don't want to see, though, which is more rare, that it opens at the same level it closed the previous day and then closes at the same level it opened the previous day. That's not a reversal signal. It's, I think, just a continuation of the downtrend, and they say more more than likely it's short covering, or uh, but it's not a signal. So as long as one of them open the same and doesn't close as, as the other, it's a signal. IQ, nothing. No direction. Oh, yeah. Kind of the same scenario. It wouldn't be long or short this one. Yeah, the 34 axis is a decent, uh, uh, and it works better over in the uh, commodity area, but it works relatively well on stocks also. Uh, those, you can see, is just a P-line crunch up through the 50-day moving average. Okay, kept you past your bedtime. With that, we'll see everybody bright and early tomorrow morning in the chat rooms. We'll see you then.